Hello, it's uh, Nikolai Warren with uh, organizationdesign.net. In this video, I'll describe an analytical approach to improving how projects are organized. And uh, more specifically, I'll show you a software tool that you can use for this purpose. In general, we can distinguish between two approaches to organization design, one strategic and the other operational. In the strategic design, we work top down by identifying the capabilities we need to realize strategic goals and uh, on aligning the formal organization with the strategy. In operational design, we work bottom up by considering how people work and by aligning the organization with the work processes. In a real redesign project, uh, we have to focus on both obviously, but uh, right now we'll uh, concentrate on operational design. And from this point of view, organization design is all about understanding the interactions or the interdependencies between different activities or between different people engaged in a work process. Consider a project uh, organized functionally with four main teams, such as engineering, procurement, fabrication, and uh, commissioning. If you look more closely at uh, who is involved in a particular work process in this project, say planning, you may find that there are seven or eight people across three teams and that there, are, uh, that there is quite a lot of interaction between them. They need to exchange information and coordinate with each other to get the job done. And this is an indication that they are independent, interdependent. Similarly, if you consider uh, other work processes, you might also find that they involve people across the uh, existing functional teams there will always be a need for some coordination across teams. But the question is whether it's possible to contain more of the interdependencies within the teams. It uh, may be possible if you can group the roles in a different manner, such as shown here on the bottom half of this slide. We don't necessarily remove interdependencies, but we may reduce the coordination cost because the people who need to collaborate the most closely are then grouped together in the same team. And this is the basic principle of the approach that I am describing here. There is a tool called the Design Structure Matrix, or DSM, that can be used uh, to do this. The DSM is a square matrix with uh, identical uh, row and column elements, which can either be um, components in a product, activities in a project plan or people in a project organization. In a so-called dynamic DSM, like we are assuming here, the assumption is that the elements are sequential, so that A precedes B and B precedes C and so on. Dependencies are indicated as X's here in the matrix. So if you look at element A, if this is a person, it means that person A depends on person D and F for information in order to complete his or her tasks or make decisions regarding the tasks. What a software tool does is that it has an algorithm that um, takes this information and restructures it to create clusters of elements where you minimize the number of interdependencies across clusters and maximize them within clusters. The uh, software tool does this by moving the elements. So if you look at um, element D, for example, you can see that it has been moved up two places in the restructured DSM here on the, on the right. In addition to reducing the cost of coordination, we may also use this approach to improve speed. If we improve the sequencing of activities, we can reduce unwanted iteration and rework because we can reduce the number of upstream elements that depend on information or outputs from downstream activities in order to be completed. The reason why we need a tool such as this to help us do this kind of analysis is simply that it's hard to do this intuitively. Even with the simple example here with only six elements, there are 30 potential interdependencies or 30 potential X's in this matrix. When I first came across the DSM tool, I uh, found it to be an intriguing concept because it helps you extract essential information about an organization or any kind of complex system in a very compact format. You can fit a large organization onto one sheet of paper. In many cases, uh, it's very valuable 
just to be able to document and visualize the current organization in this way. It can be the starting point for a discussion about whether we have the right processes, the right level of integration and so on, or whether we have uh, an incomplete picture and whether we are ignoring some critical interfaces. In practice, you will usually proceed in three steps to do this. First, you need to identify the interdependencies, of course. If it's a small group of people, you can simply invite them to a workshop or you can interview each one of them individually and ask them about their key responsibilities and who they depend on for information or approval in order to complete their work. For larger groups of people, I have developed a survey questionnaire that can be sent out electronically and that can be used to map even a fairly large organization in less than a week's time. Once you have these data, you can start to analyze them by using the DSM methodology. And you can then adjust the organization based on the uh, results of your analysis. So this was uh, a bit of background. Uh, let's um, go to um, the, um, the tool now and take a look at it. So. Um, this tool has been developed by a company in Australia and it's called um, Project DSM, Project Plans for Fast Value Delivery. If you saw my uh, previous blog post, you recognize that these are the names uh, in the column here from the example I gave you, six people. Um, and for each person, I've entered the information I provided about the um, dependencies. So as an example, if we go to Ashley, I have uh, indicated that she is dependent upon Edmund and Frank, but not the three other participants, and similarly for the other five people. So this is the, uh, the key step uh, in, this, uh, in this analysis to enter this information. And once you've done that, the tool then produces uh, the uh, matrix, and here it has been restructured. So you see that Frank, Evan, and Ashley comprise uh, one cluster here, and Charles, Dorothy, and Ben are um, in the uh, second cluster. And there's one dependency, so the output of the um, work that the first team um, does uh, is, uh, is this dependency here, which is the input for the second team. So basically, the first team does analysis, and the second team does design work in this particular case. There's also a dependency map where you can see uh, the same uh, with the uh, arrows between the, uh, the boxes here. And because there are only six people, um, in this case, this visual map is actually sufficient. You see, you see that there's one team here that delivers to uh, this team over here. However, if there is a larger number of people, like in uh, another example I have here, um, in this example I have 35 uh, elements or roles and then you can see that the dependency map becomes very complicated so here yeah, you really have to use the, the matrix and uh, and get the help of the uh, tool to to uh, re-sequence and restructure the uh, the information so this was a, a very quick uh, look at the um, the tool to sum up uh, this approach can uh, help you do two things it can uh, increase productivity by reducing the uh, uh, co coordination cost. It can help you improve speed by reducing the amount of uh, iteration and rework. As for the tool itself, I have a couple of observations I wanted to share with you. On the uh, positive side, um, this is uh, suitable for projects and processes. It's a stable and reliable tool, unlike some others I've tried. It can import data from Microsoft Project, uh, which is useful, of course, if you are a project manager and uh, if you use this, um, this software. Then there are also some limitations, unfortunately. One is that it's not suitable um, currently for organization design more generally, and this has to do with the algorithm being used here, which is only suitable for um, uh, work processes where you have uh, sequential elements. Uh, so it's not suitable for what is called static DSM, DSMs or team-based DSMs, where the elements are organizational units, for example. And uh, unfortunately, there's no solution for data gathering or import from survey tools. I mentioned that 
I've uh, created a survey questionnaire to collect data about um, how people uh, collaborate. And uh, right now the survey questionnaire works fine, but uh, one has to input the uh, data manually into the uh, Project DSM tool. So this is, of course, very time consuming. Nonetheless, I wanted to create this video because I think the uh, approach as such is very important. It really shows you how one can do organization design in an analytical and data-driven manner. And uh, over time, I also expect that um, this developer or other companies that uh, develop uh, similar software tools will be able to address these limitations. Cheers.